Hello and welcome to video 4 of the FP3 chapter Vectors. Start a question on the screen, pause the video now if you have time. Calculate the scalar triple product a dot b cross c. So we want to need b cross c first and then we'll dot that with a. Here we've got 1, 1, minus 1, cross 2, 3, 5. So that's 5 minus minus 3, minus 2 minus 5, and 3 minus 2. And then a dot this will be 3 minus 1, 4, dot 8 minus 7, 1, which gives us 24 plus 7 plus 4, which is 35. Hence, write down the value of b dot c cross a and these other two as well. Now looking back at the original question, this reads a, b, c. A, B, C. In terms of the cyclic process, this is the same as this. So the answer will be the same. 35. This one, A, B, C, is not the same. We would have to go backwards to make this work. Or another way of thinking about this is to see that the only difference is C cross A is changed to A cross C. Both situations tell us that this should be a negative but with the same number 35 so negative 35 the last one c dot a cross c well there's two vectors here that are the same therefore they must be parallel to one another so this one is zero if you see the words write down in a question that's a big clue that you shouldn't need to do too much working out Okay, in this video we're going to look at the vector equation of a line. To start us off, coming back from P4, we already know a vector equation of the line in terms of the position vector A of a known point and the direction vector of the line, which was called B. So here's our line. And here we have, from the origin, the position vector A leading to a fixed point, a known fixed point on the line A, and then the direction vector of the line, which we call B. And that is enough to define your line. For any point R on the line, where R can be any point along here, we can get to there by going from O to A, and then some factor of B along this line. And that will take us to any point R on the line. And that some factor is often called lambda. So this, I hope, is familiar to you. This is a vector equation of the line L, where r and lambda are your variables, and a and b are the things to find out in order to define your line. So in this video, we're going to look at a few other options. Because we know from this that r minus a, from here to here, must be parallel to the direction vector b, because it's all going along the line. Another way of thinking about this is if I just take the a algebraically on the other side, and we remember that if this answer vector r minus a is equal to a multiple of b, then r minus a must be parallel to b. And we also know that the cross product between two parallel vectors must be zero. So the vector r minus a and the vector b, they must be parallel. And therefore, if we do the cross product of these, the answer must be zero, which lets us write down a vector equation of the line without using lambda. And then, of course, we can just expand that out and bring the minus a cross b to the other side. And we can write it like this. So you might be asked to use this vector equation of a line 
but you might just as easily be asked to use this one or this one. Notice if you know a and b for this one then there's no difference here you can still write this down and you can still write this down. a and b are your defining elements of the line whichever form you're using for the equation. And you know a Cartesian equation of the line, the usual sort of y equals mx plus c situation. And we can do a Cartesian equation of the line using vectors a and b. And that uses this sort of middle step that we used on the previous slide, that r minus a is equal to lambda b. Because if instead of turning this into a cross product, we put in vectors here, so r is your general point, x, y, z, where x, y, and z are unknowns. They are changing depending on where your point is. a1, a2, a3 is the position vector of the known point, And b1, b2, b3 is the direction vector that you would know for the line. And lambda, of course, is also an unknown. Depending on where the point is, lambda will change. Then we can put these two together. And then we can equate the i's, j's, and k's because x minus a1 here must equal lambda times b1 here. And we can write that as a separate equation. Like this. And then a quick rearranging, put b1 on the other side, and you get x minus a1 over b1 must equal lambda. But the interesting thing is that you can do the same with the j component y minus a2 must equal lambda b2 divided by b2, and you've got y minus a2 divided by b2 must equal this same lambda. And you can do the same with the k components, and when you've done all three, you can write what looks like a strange equation because there are so many equal signs here, but this must equal this, which must equal this, and all three of these must equal that lambda. But again, notice if you know a and you know b, then you can write down this equation. Because x, y, and z and lambda all depend on where exactly the point is. If you fix that, it's a fixed point in your question. It's not the general equation of the line. So with all of these forms, although they look very different, if you know a and you know b, it's quite easy to write them down. So a few examples. Find a vector equation of the line through the points this and this in the form this. So it's specific to the question. They want us to use this form. And to do that, they've given us two points. Now I'm going to call this one A. And I'm going to call this one, slightly strangely, I'm going to call it F. And I didn't want to call it B because the little b here means something different. This means the direction vector of the line, whereas if I call this point b, then little b implies it's the position vector of this point, which I don't want. However, I do want the position vector of a. I'm going to use this point to give me this. So I've got r minus the position vector of one of the points. And it didn't matter which point. I've used this one. But the position vector of this one will get you to the line just as easily. So there's more than one answer to this question. And that must be crossed with B. Now if I've got point A here, and I've got point F here, and B is the direction vector of the line, then to get B I can do F minus A. And you can see here why I didn't want to call this point b, because then I'd get two different b's in the same equation. It would be very confusing. So b is equal to the position vector of my second point minus the position vector of my first point. And that is 2 minus 4, 3. So I've got 2 minus 4, 3 equals zero. And I don't need to do anything with this because it's in the form they want.
Here we have a line with vector equation this, and we're asked to show that the Cartesian equation is this, where we have to find L, M, and N. Now, given what we know about the vector form in this way, we know that this must be A, this must be B, and L, M, and N are just the elements of B, so L must be 4, M must be minus 3, and N must be 2. But this little phrase, show that, implies that I shouldn't just write it down, I should give some idea of where this has come from. So I'm going to have to go through a little bit of a process here. So what I can do is very similar to what we've already talked about. If the cross product of these two things equals zero, then I can immediately write that this must equal some multiple of this because these two things say the same thing this is saying that r minus this vector is parallel to this vector and this equation is saying exactly the same r minus this vector is parallel to some magnitude of this vector and from here i can now say okay well Let's change r into x, y, z. And then we can equate i, j, and k to give us x minus 1 must equal a lambda times 4. So x minus 1 over 4 equals lambda, and then we have y minus 2 is equal to minus 3 lambda, so y minus 2 over minus 3 equals lambda, and for the k we've got z minus minus 1, so z plus 1 must equal 2 lambda, so z plus 1 over 2 equals lambda. So we've got x minus 1 over 4 must be the same as y minus 2 over minus 3, must be the same as z plus 1 over 2, because they all equal this same lambda. And we do indeed have L is 4, N is minus 3, and N is 2, as expected. Final example. Find the vector equation of the line in the form this, which passes through these two points P and Q. Again, it doesn't matter which one you choose for your position vector A, and it doesn't matter which way around you choose to do them for your direction vector B, whether you do Q minus P or P minus Q. They will be giving you correct, although slightly different, equations of the same line. So I'm going to choose A to be 3, 1, minus 2, and B will be Q minus P where q and p are the position vectors of these points. And that gives me minus 5, 2, 7. So r cross b is equal to a cross b. And if you've got two vectors where you actually know the numbers, I would recommend you go ahead and do that. So the top element, 7 minus minus 4, 10 minus 21, and 6 minus minus 5. And there we go. That should be enough for you to do the questions from exercise 5D, and maybe I'll see you in the next video.